I just actually, I just met with the disabled veterans who are here in town today, and I told them I was going to be talking about energy, and they said, well, you know, we're really just the, the uh, long-term effort of the Veterans Administration to get veterans to their health care appointments uh, is dramatically impacted by these high gas prices, just like uh, what veterans and retirees of all kinds were going to do with the number that went into their um, uh, the, the, the number of dollars that went into their gas tank. As they see that gas tank uh, uh, go to $10 and maybe they decide I'm going to have to quit because that's all the money I've got with me, or I'm going to fill up the tank and see it go 40, 50, 60. As families look at that, as retirees look at that, as veterans look at that, uh, they've got to be thinking as that, as that uh, gas tank number changes, something else they were going to do that week is something that they're not going to be able to do. This has dramatic impact on families. It has dramatic impact on the way we live. Uh, it uh, has dramatic impact on the confidence people have in our economy. Uh, if you look at any charts of gas prices going up, you see consumer confidence going down. It happens in states like yours or in states in the middle of the country like Missouri or uh, Senator Portman's uh, state of Ohio. And Senator, have you got some I know we've all been home. I'm sure you can't have been home and not have heard a lot about gas prices. Well, you know, I was asked the other day when I was home, uh, does, does, the, does the administration have a plan? And I said, well, if you listen to what they say, this is their plan for these gas prices to go up. And, and we're not Europe. In spite of what the Secretary of Energy may have said the month before he was named as secretary, that our big problem was that our gas wasn't as high as gasoline in Europe. That was, according to him, our big problem. Now, the president who appointed him said just a few weeks before that at the San Francisco Chronicle editorial board, of, he said, of course, under my energy policies, energy prices will skyrocket. Uh, and so uh, apparently they're, they're well along the way on the plan. As we've mentioned a couple of times already, gasoline twice as high as it was uh, in January of 2009. You know, we're, we're not Europe. We're a big country uh, that is dependent on transportation. Uh, we, we drive to go to work longer than most Europeans do. Uh, we transport our goods more than most Europeans do. We have this big agricultural economy that feeds a whole lot of the world and only really works with affordable energy. And, and two points that both you and the senator from Ohio have made that I'd like to, to, to drive home. One is that more American jobs mean more American, uh, more American energy means more American jobs. And not just the, the jobs to build something like the Keystone Pipeline, uh, but also the jobs at the refinery when that 800,000 barrels of oil a day gets to our refinery, there are American workers running that refinery. Uh, and if our economy's prosperous, uh, there are more, more people working in manufacturing and transportation and all the things that we do for a living. And the shortest path to more American jobs is more American energy. And we should be working on that. And then the impact on families. You know, as families see what's happening uh, at the gas pump, as I said earlier, they just give up on other things that they would hope to do. Uh, the president said at the uh, State of the Union message that he was for an all of the above strategy. Now, apparently the regulators don't know about this. The regulators that, that the president have appointed seem to have no clue that the all of the above strategy of coal, of natural gas, uh, of, uh, of oil, needs to be part of what we're doing as we invest in the future. Nobody is opposed to looking for what comes next after fossil fuel. Uh, the concern is it, we're not there. And even if we knew we were going there, Mr. President, we wouldn't get there for a long time. Even if we knew what would power our cars 30 years from now, most cars 20 or 25 years from now would still be pulling up to a gas pump. Most trucks would still be pulling up to a gas pump. Uh, we frankly probably couldn't, the economy couldn't absorb it any other way. And we don't know yet what is the likely next thing. I'm for seeing us invest in that. I'm for conservation. Uh, so we use our energy more wisely. But let me just say, the poorest people are the people, they're the last ones that get the, uh, the new high mileage vehicle or the energy efficient refrigerator uh, or the new windows. 
uh, retired Americans, Americans struggling to get by, are going to be the last people to benefit in most cases from those ideas, well, let's just conserve our way out of this or let's price our way out of this. Uh, more American energy is good for us. Energy from our next door neighbor is the next best thing uh, to what is uh, energy that we produce ourselves. And we ought to be doing all we can to produce all the competitive energy we can on our own. We then ought to be doing all we can to encourage our, our, our closest trading partner, our most equitable trading partner. When we send them a dollar, they send us almost a dollar back every single time. Uh, and energy security. Uh, the odds that we're going to have a problem with our Canadian neighbor are a whole lot less than the odds that something's going to happen in the Middle East that's a problem for us. Uh, we can become, because of these new finds in oil shale and gas shale uh, and tar sands and other things, uh, we can, and the small platforms we can now use to access oil uh, that we wouldn't want to disrupt uh, in, a, in a significant way, but a small drilling platform doesn't do that. And you know, uh, I thank our good friend, uh, Senator Hutchinson from Texas for putting this together and being such, this, this discussion today and being such a leader on these energy issues. Uh, but Senator Hoven, when he was Governor Hoven, saw exactly what can happen in the economy of a state uh, when you decide you're going to make the most of your natural resources. Uh, and the economy of uh, North Dakota changed dramatically uh, while he was governor because it became an energy producer and now one of the biggest energy producers uh, in our country. And I know he wants to talk about the Keystone Pipeline, and I want to hear him talk about that. But uh, uh, if you're ready, uh, Senator, we, uh, let me go back to you and then... We'll hear more, I'm sure, from uh, Governor Hoven, Senator Hoven, about the Keystone Pipeline. Can I make one final point on that? You know, every other country in the world looks at its natural resources, and the first two words they think of are economic advantage or economic opportunity. And that's what the Canadians are doing. Only in the United States do you have a significant, any significant number of leaders who look at our natural resources, and the first two words they think of are environmental hazard. What's the worst thing that could happen, and what would happen if that happened every day? Uh, and the Canadians, uh, you know, their prime minister was in, uh, uh, in China within the last month talking about selling that, their, their, their oil to the Chinese who want to buy it. Mm -hmm. And that's what the Canadians should be doing. They would prefer to sell it to us. We should buy it. But they're not going to just decide, well, if uh, our most logical partner doesn't want it, we'll just let our economy suffer and not do anything with it. Nobody else looks at its energy resources that way. We shouldn't either. We shouldn't expect the Canadians to. Uh, that pipeline is going to go either south to our refineries or west to the uh, coast that will then ship all of that oil to Asia. And we, should, we shouldn't let that happen. They don't want it to happen. But we shouldn't be upset with them if we won't buy it and they decide that they're going to benefit from their own resources as they should. The senator from Missouri is making the exact right point.